this gentleman. The prince is near ally. My very friend hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt at an hour hath been my kinsman. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. Fired the clouds that too untimely here did scorn the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the woe others must end. Here comes the furious tilt back again. Alive in triumph, and Mercutio slain. Away to heaven, respected remedy. And fire and fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again which late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little ways above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I, or both, must go with him. Thou wretched boy that did consort with him here, shalt with him hence. This shall determine that!
for air, I could draw to part them with stout tippled sling. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly. This is the truth, or let Benvolio die. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Obsession makes him fall, he speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strength, and on that twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, Prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, Prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault conclude but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he's found, that hour is his last. Bear hence his body and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. Place your fiery footed steeds towards Phoebus lodging. Such a Wagner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy clothes, curtain, love performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties. Or if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil knight, thou sober-suited matron, all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match, played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. <laughs> Hood, my unmanned blood baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle, till strange love grown bold, Think true love acted simple modesty. Come, night, come, Romeo, come thou day in night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow on a raven's back. Come, loving night, come, loving black browed night. Give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. He will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love and not possessed it. And although sold, not yet enjoyed, so tedious is this day as is the night before some festival to an impatient child who hath new robes and may not wear them. Here comes my nurse and she has news. And every tongue that speaks by Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? What hast thou there? The cords of Romeo bid thee fetch? Ah, ah, the cords. I mean, what news? Why dost thou wring my hands? Like the day we are undone, lady. We are undone. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Alack, the day he's gone, he's killed, he's dead. Heaven be so envious. Romeo can! Though heaven cannot! Oh, Romeo! Romeo! Whoever was bought it, Romeo! The devil art thou that dost torment me thus? 
His torture should be wrought in dismal hell. Hath Romeo slain him? I saw the wound, I saw it with mine eyes. Here on his manly breast, the piteous corpse, bloody, piteous corpse, pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood. I swooned at the sight. Break my heart. Oh, bankrupt, break at once. Tybalt, Tybalt, best friend I had, courteous Tybalt, honest gentleman, that ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? Tybalt is gone, and Romeo vanished. Romeo that killed him, he is vanished. God. Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood. It did. It did. Oh. Back the day, it did. Something hot. Hit with the flowering face. Just opposite of what thou justly seemest. Damned and saint, an honorable villain. For nature, which hast thou to do in hell when thou didst bow the spirit of a fiend in moral paradise of such sweet flesh? For is there a book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Like deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. There's no faith, no trust, no honesty in men, all perjured, all forsworn, all not, all dissemblers. Bring me some aqua vitae, oh! These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Listed be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow, shame is a shame to sit, for tis an honor where, where, where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of the universal earth. Such a beast was I to chide him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? is dead, Romeo, banish it. But banish it. But one word banish it hath slain ten thousand Tybalt's. Tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there, but Romeo is banished. Speak that word. His father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead, Romeo is banished. There is no end, no limit, measure, bound in that word's death. No word that woke and sound. Where is my father and my mother, nurse? Weeping and wailing over Tybalt's corpse. Hi, you. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I want well where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll kill him. He is hit at that himself. <laughs> find him. Give this ring to my true knight. Bid him come take his last farewell. Sorrow craved acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doom's day is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. <laughs> Banish me. Be merciful. Say death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do not say banishment. 
Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona's walls, where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog and little mouse live here in heaven and may look on her, but Romeo may not. He is banished. And tell no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, though ne'er so mean, but banish it to kill me. Banish it. The damned use that word in hell. Howlings attends it. How has then the heart being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and my friend professed to mangle me with that word banish it? Thou fond madman, hear me but speak a word. Who oh, that will speak again of banishment? I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, philosophy to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banished. Hang up, philosophy. Unless philosophy can displant a town, reverse a prince's do, make a Juliet. It helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. Arise, one knocks, good Romeo, hide thyself. <laughs> Hark, how they knock? Who's there? Romeo, rise, thou wilt be taken. Stay a while. Stand up, run to my study. What a simple this is this. Who goes there? Whence come you? What's your will? Hey, you shall know my errand. I've come to Juliet. Welcome then. Where's my lady's lord? Where's one? There on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my it's mistress' case. He is just in her case. <laughs> even so lies she blubbering and weeping. Weeping and blubbering, oh, piteous predicament. <laughs> Woeful sympathy. Stand up. Stand up and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. She speaks out, Juliet. Who is with her? Does not she think me an old murderer? What says she? What says my concealed lady to our concealed love? She says nothing, sir. Weeps and weeps, and down falls on her bed, and then starts up, and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and down falls again. As if that name, shot from the dead level of a gun, did murder her. As that name's cursed in hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me. Tell me, mother, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I may sack the hateful man's ship. Hold thy desperate hand! Art thou a man? Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. Unseemly woman and a seeming man or it'll be seeming beast and seeming both. <laughs> Thou hast amazed me by my holy order. I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself and stay thy lady too that lives in thee by doing damn and hate upon thyself? was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence and comfort her. But look, thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua. Thou shalt live till we can find the time to blaze your marriage. 
reconcile your friends and beg pardon of the prince and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Go before nurse and commend me to thy lady and bid her hasten all the house to bed which heavy sorrow makes them act unto. Romeo is coming. Oh Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. What learning is my lord, I'll tell my lady you'll come. Do so. <laughs> bid my sweet prepare to chide. Here, sir, a ring she bid me give you, sir. How you make haste, for it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence. Good night, and here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua, I will find out your man, and he shall signify to you from time to time every good hap that chances here. Give me thy hand. It is late. Farewell and good night. Would it not that a joy past joy calls out on me? For grief, so grief to part with thee. Come on. Thou be gone? It's not yet in the day. There's a nightingale, not the lark, that pierces the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, when envious streaks do lace the severing clouds of yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and Jock and Day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain's tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight, I know it's I. It is some meteor which the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torchbearer, and lead thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore stay, yet thou needst not be gone. Let me be tame. Let me be put to death. I am content, so thou wilt have it so. I'll say, yon gray is not the morning's eye. It is but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. Nor that is not the lark, whose notes do beat the lofty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? This talk it is not day. It is. It is, I hands be gone away, it is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and pleasing shops. Now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light. More dark and dark how woes. Madam? Yes. Elaine Roberts coming to your chamber. The day is broke, be wary. Look about. And window, let light in and let life out. Here we go. One kiss. And I'll descend. Art thou gone so? Love, Lord, my husband, friend. I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. By this count, I'll be much in years ere I again behold my room. Farewell. I will omit no opportunity that I may convey my greetings, love, to thee. 
or thinks that we shall ever meet again. I doubt it not. And all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. God, I have an ill divining song. Methinks I see thee. Now thou art below. This one dead in the bottom of the tomb. Either my eyesight fails, or thou looks pale. And trust me, love. In my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu. Adieu. Down so early and up so late, what unaccustomed cause procures her here? Why, how now? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. <laughs> what wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live, therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. For now I bring thee joyful tidings, child. And the joy comes in such a needy time. What are they, I beseech you, your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child, who, to put thee from thy heaviness, has sorted out a sudden day of joy, one thou expects not, nor I look not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is this? Marry, my child. Early next Thursday morn, the gallant young and noble gentleman in the county Paris at St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. By St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he will not make thee there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray thee, tell my lord and father I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear, it, it shall be to Romeo, whom you know I hate, or rather than Paris. This, is a news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself. See how we take it of your hand. How now, wife? Will you deliver to her our decree? Aye, my lord, but she'll none. She gives you thanks. I were the fool. We're married to her grave. Soft, take me with you, take me with you, wife. How will she none? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have brought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud I can never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How now, how now? Chopped logic! What is this, proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud, mistress minion you. Thank me no thankings, nor proud me no prouds, but settle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I'll drag thee on a hurdle thither. <coughs> Out, you green sickness carrion. Out, you baggage. <coughs> You towel face! Great fire, you mad! Good father, I beseech you on my knees! Hear me with patience, but to speak a word! Hang thee, young baggage! <laughs> Disobedient wretch! I tell thee what, get thee to church a Thursday, or never after look me in the face! Will speak not, not reply not! Do not Thursday answer me! My fingers Thursday. itch! Wife! We scarce thought us blessed that that God had lent us but this one child, but now I see that this one is one too much, and that we have a curse in having her out on her high knees. God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. Oh, thy tongue, good prudence, smack her with your gossips. Go! Oh, God, ye got there! You are too hot! Oh, 
God's bread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, time, tide, work, play alone in company. Still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage to answer, oh, oh, I'm not wed, I am too young, I cannot love, I pray you pardon me. But and you'll not wed, I'll pardon thee. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it. I do not use to jest. Thursday is near. Place hand on heart, advise, and you be mine. I'll give you to my friend. And you be not. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. Nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, but think you, I'll not be forsworn. This I know. It is sitting on the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief. Sweet, my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month or a week. For if you do not make the bridal bed in that dim monument with civil lies. Talk not to me. <laughs> I'll speak not a word. Do as thou wilt, for I've done with thee. Oh, oh, oh God, oh nurse, how shall this be prevented? What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse. Hey, here it is. Tell me how we Spanish it. All the world to nothing that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or, if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, since the case so stands is now tough, I think it best you marry with the county. Why, he is a lovely gentleman. Romeo is a dish clown to him. An eagle. Madam hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris, huh? Beshrew my very heart. I think you are happy in the second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead. For twere as good he were as living here, and you know use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too, else beshrew them both. Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Go in. And tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to the abbess, to make confession and be absolved. No, I will, and this is wisely done. Damnation, almost wicked faith. More sin to wish me thus for sworn than to dispraise my husband with that same tongue she hath praised him with above compare so many hundred times. Go, counselor. Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. But to the abbess to know her remedy. All else fails. Myself have power to die. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, 
And therefore little have I talked of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway. And in his wisdom hastes our marriage. Come Thursday next. Juliet, the time is very short. Poor soul, thy face is much abused with tears. Are you at leisure, Holy Mother, now, or shall I come to your evening mass? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. <laughs> come weep with me. As I will ask you will pass to help. Juliet, <laughs> I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next, be married to this county. Tell me not, Abbas, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. In thy wisdom, thou canst give no help. And do but call my resolution wise. It's life. I'll help it presently. Not so long to speak, I long to die. If what thou speakest, speak no morality. Oh, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope. One which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent. If rather than to marry the county Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then is it likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death? to chide away the shame that copest with death himself to escape from it? If thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leave rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of yonder tower. I will do it without fear or doubt, live an unstained wife to my true love. Hold then, go home, be merry, give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, and this distilled liquor drink thou off, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor, for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to paley ashes, thy eyes' windows fall like death when he shuts out the day of life. Each part, deprived of supple government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours. And then awake, as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. And as the manner of the country is uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and he and I shall watch thy waking. And that very night shall he bear thee hence to Mantua. And this shall free thee from this present shame, if no inconstant toy, nor womanish fear, Abate thy valor in the acting it. Give me, give me, oh, tell not me of fear. Hold. Be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a fire with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength. And strength shall help a fort. Farewell, dear mother. Unfurnished for this time. Lord, oh, is my daughter gone to pray? Aye, forsooth. 
Well, it may chance to do some good on her of peevish self will the harlotry it is. <laughs> See where she comes from, shrift with merry look. How now, my headstrong, where have you been gadding? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you in your behest. And am enjoined by holy abbess to fall prostrate here and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Send for the county. Go tell him of this. I have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. I am glad on it. This is well. Stand up. This is as should be. Let me see the county. I, Mary, go, I say, fetch him hither. Now, afore God, this, this reverend holy abbess, our whole city is much bound to her. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me seek such needful ornaments that you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? Not till Thursday, there's time enough. Go with her, nurse. Go prepare her against tomorrow. We will be short in our provisions. Tis now near night. Oh, Tush, I will stir about. All things shall be well, I warrant thee, wife. Go thou to Juliet, help deck up her. I'll not to bed tonight, let me alone. I'll play the housewife for this once. What ho! Oh, they are all forth. I will go myself to County Paris to prepare him up against tomorrow. Oh, my heart is wondrous light. Since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. <laughs> I these are ties of that. Gentleness, I pray thee, leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which, well, thou knowest, is cross and full of sin. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. We'll call her back again to comfort me. Nurse! Should she do here? My dismal scene, I needs must act alone. Come, well. But if the mixture do not work at all, shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No. No. This shall forbid it. Lie thou there. If it be a poison which the abbess subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage she should be dishonored, because she married me before to Romeo. I fear it is, and yet methinks it should not, for she hath still been tried a holy one. How if? When I am laid in the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me. There's a fearful point. Is it not like that? I shall then be stifled in the vault to whose foul mouth no wholesome air breathes in and there die strangled and my Romeo comes. Or if I live, not very like the horrible conceit 
of death and night together with the terror of the place. It's in a vault. An ancient receptacle. But for these many hundred years, the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed. The bloody Tybalt, yet but green in earth like festering in his shroud. Whereas they say, at summer hours in the night, spirits resort. Alack, alack, is it not like that I'm so early waking, what with loathsome smells and, and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth, that living mortals hearing them run mad. Oh. If I wake, shall I not then be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with some forefather's joints, and pluck the mangled tibble out of his shroud, and in this rage, with some great kingsman's bones, as with the club, dash out my desperate brains. <laughs> Look, thinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo. The dip spit his body on a right fist point. Stay! He won't stay! Romeo, I come. hath set up his rest that you shall rest but little. <laughs> God forgive me. Mary and amen. What, not a word. I must needs wake her. Madam! Madam! Madam? I ah, let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up in faith, could it not be? What? Dressed and in your clothes and down again. I must needs wake you. Lady! Lady! Lady? Alas! Alas! Help! Help! My lady's dead. Oh, well, the day that ever I was born. Zamaquivite! Help! My lord! My lady! What noise is this? Oh, men's old day. What's the matter? Oh, look! Look! Oh, heavy day. Oh, me. Oh, me. My child. My only life revived. Look up, or I will die with thee. Help. Help, Paul, help! Oh, shame. Bring Juliet forth. 
the Lord had come. She said, deceased, she's dead, alack the day. Alack the day, she's dead. Oh, let me see her. Now, to last, she's cold. Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. Lack the day. Oh, natural day. Death that had pain her hence to make me wail ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Uh, ready to go, but never to return. One. Poor one. One poor and loving child, one thing rejoices and solace and, and cruel death has cast me from our sight. Pardon this fair maid, now heaven hath all. And all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death. But heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, for twas your heaven she should be advanced. Weep you now, seeing she is advanced above the clouds as high as heaven itself. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on the square course. For though fond nature bids us a lament, yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. All things that we have ordained a festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast. Our solemn hymns, the sullen dirges change. Our bridal flowers serve for a buried corpse. And all things change them to the contrary. Sir, go to. Madam, go with him. Everyone, prepare to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream to give a dead man leave to think, and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Oh me. How sweet is love, itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona! How now, Balthazar? Is thou not bring me letters from the abbess? How doth my lady? Is my mother well? How doth my lady Julia Hetz? For that I ask again, nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well and nothing can be ill. Her body lies in Capulet's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office. Oh, sir. Is it even so? Sir. And I defy you, stars. Now knows my lodging. Gather my things and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir. Have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Hush, thou art deceived. Go and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the abbess? No, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. 
Well, Juliet, I will lay with thee tonight and see for means. Oh, mischief. Thou art swift to enter into the minds of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary. And hereabouts dwells, which late I noted in tattered weeds, overwhelming brows. Meager were her looks. Sharp misery had worn her to the bone. Noting this penury, I to myself said, And if a man did need a poison now, whose sale is present death in Mantua, here lives a cat of fret would sell at him. This same thought did but forerun my need. This same woman must sell at me. As I remember, this should be the place. Being holiday, the beggar shop is shut. What ho! Apothecary! The cops are now. Come hither, woman. I see that thou art poor. Hold. There is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life weary taker may fall dead. This mortal drugs I have. But may I shall flaw death to him, that uttered them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in my cheeks. Need and oppression starveth in thine eyes. Contempt and beggary hang upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. And be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will consent. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. Take this and put it in any liquid thing you will and drink it off. Like if I just the twenty men, just back to straight. There's thy gold. Worst poison to men's souls. I had sold thee poison, thou hast sold me none. Farewell. Buy food and get thyself in flesh. Uncordial and do not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave. For there I must use thee.
to associate me here in the city visiting the sick and finding him the searchers of the town suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign sealed up the doors and would not let us forth so that my speech to Mantua there was stayed who bear my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it here it is again nor get a messenger to bring it thee so fearful were they of infection unhappy fortune this letter was not nice but full of charge of dear import, the neglecting it may do much danger. Go hence! We'll go. In three hours will fair Juliet wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath had no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua. Poor living corpse, clothes in a dead man's tomb. Old Balthazar. Take this letter. Early in the morning, see that I'll deliver it to my lady mother. Give me the torch. Upon my life, I charge thee. Whate'er thou hearst or ceased, stand all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. Therefore, hence, be gone. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So shalt thou show me friendship. Oh. Take thou that. Live. And be prosperous. And farewell, good fellow. For all this same, I'll hide me here, Bob. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. My love. But wife. Death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy cheeks and in thy lips, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Thou art not conquered. Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe? that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour. For fear of that, I still will stay with thee. And ever from this palace of dim night, depart again. Here, here will I remain, with worms that are thy chambermaids. Here. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world weary flesh. While I slipped your last. Warriors, get your last embrace. Your lips. Oh, you. The gates of breath. Deal with a righteous kiss. The dateless bargain to engross in death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide. 
gives to my love. with a kiss. I die. St. Francis be my speed. How often I have my old feet stumbled at graves. Who's there? Here's one. A friend, and one that knows you well. Bless me upon you. Tell me, good my friend, what torch is yon that vainly lends its light to groves and eyeless skulls, as I discern it burneth in the Cape of Monument? It doth so, holy mother, and there is my master, one that you love. Who is it? Romeo. How long has he been there? Full half an hour. Come with me to the vault. I dare not. My master knows not, but I am gone hence, and fearfully did menace me with death if I did stay to look on his intents. Go then! I'll go alone. Oh, I do fear some ill, unlucky thing. Oh. Romeo! Romeo! and an unnatural sleep, a greater power than we can contradict that thwarted our intents. Come, come away! Thy husband and thy bosom there lies dead. Come, I'll dispose of thee among the sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question for the watch is coming! Come, go, the Julian! I do no more mistake. Don't get thee hence, for I will not away! I see I've been his timeless end. Tja. Uncle, I've no friendly drop to help me after. I'll kiss thy lips. Happily some poison, yet don't hang on them to make die with restorative. Oh, pitiful son, and Juliet, 
bleeding, warm and newly dead, who here has lain these two days buried. Go tell the prince, run to the Capulets. Raise up the Montagues, and let some others search. We see the ground where all these woes do lie, but the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance describe. What misadventures so early up, that calls our persons from our morning's rest? Sovereign, here lies Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before a warm and new killed. Oh, heavens. <laughs> Look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger is misstained, for lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague, and it misheathed in my daughter's bosom. The sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to his sepulcher. <coughs> Come, Montague, for thou art early up. To see thy son and heir more early down. Alas, my liege, what further woe conspires against mine age? Look, and thou shalt see. O oh, thou untaught, what manner is in this to press before thy mother to a grave? Seal up the mouth of outrage for a while so we can clear these ambiguities. I am the greatest, able to do least, yet most suspected of this time and place doth make against me of this direful murder. Then say it once what thou dost know in this. I will be brief, for my short date of breath is not as long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, their dead, was husband to that Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet? Montague? See what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven's finds means to kill your joys with love, and I, for winking at your discords, too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punishing! Oh, Madam Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. But I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold, that while Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. A blooming peace this morning with the brings. The sun, the sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punish it. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. How to shoot at someone who outdrew you. It's not a cry you can hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah,
one we sold out, and all our crew from backstage and on the lighting desk, if you could please come up and stand here. <laughs> Round of applause. Round of applause. Thank All you. the people make us look great. <laughs> um, a special thank you to. Oh yes, I've got this covered. <laughs> a special thank you to Colleen, uh, who's not only our a director here. She is the everything woman, the producer, uh, the costumer, absolutely everything. Her house and her life gets turned upside down for about three months every year, if not more. And uh, from the bottom of our hearts, we really do appreciate that. So thank you, Colleen. Also in the audience tonight. We have our superstar flight directors, Joey and Nick. You're hiding there. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for supporting us here tonight. And to all our audiences who have joined us over the past two weeks, we thank you very much. Uh, without you, we don't have our Shakespeare Miami. So thanks a lot. Safe travels home. Thank you.